Welcome to the Capital News. I am your host, Alex Caritas. Today is Thursday, March 19th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. Title of today's podcast, Does Money Even Matter? Does Debt Even Matter? That's the theme. That's the topic of today's podcast. Markets bounced back slightly. I mean, depending on the headline, you would think that this was a huge rally on Wall Street. Today it wasn't. About a half a percent on the S&P, about one, you know, 1%, almost, not even, on the Dow. A couple percentage points on the NASDAQ. The small caps, the Russell 2000 index, they came roaring back. We're not surprised by this. Anytime you're in a bear market, your counter trends are typically quite strong. So in regards to the small caps, the Russell 2000 having a sizable gain of about 6% today, to me, that's not surprising. Does it mean we're out of the woods? My opinion, my analysis, no, not even close. We're just getting started. This simply eliminated the last three years of gains, which most of it was built off of an existing bubble to begin with. More share buybacks, tax cuts that were not needed that have caused trillion-dollar deficits, and now we are going to be issuing another trillion dollars plus just for this quote-unquote stimulus package. And... Ladies and gentlemen, we are not even yet, at least not officially, in a recession. So before this, people still had jobs, right? Maybe not the greatest jobs, but they still had a job. They were still getting paid. So that's cash flow for those individuals, those families, those households. It was cash flows for businesses, small, medium, large, whatever. Now, if people start shuttering their businesses, people start getting laid off, now you really start to compound the problem. So to see a a deficit, a national deficit of $2 trillion, maybe even $3 trillion over the next couple of years is not going to be surprising to me, even if it's larger than that. And it's truly hard to believe, but that might be where we're headed. Now, to me, money does matter. To me, debt does matter. I could not have conducted the analysis that I have been warning about what was going to happen, which is taking place now, if debt didn't matter. However, however, I do believe there are people at the top, the upper echelons of our society within our government, within institutions of influence, that continue to push this MMT, this modern monetary theory, which basically states, and we've discussed this here before, that money, or more accurately, debt doesn't matter. Debt doesn't matter, especially here in the United States, because we're the global reserve currency with the U.S. dollar. So you can print as much as you want for whatever you need. Deficits as big as you want for whatever you need. Don't worry about it. And, and just by chance, if inflation ticks up, all the government has to do is raise taxes to rein it back in a little bit and everything will be perfectly fine. Well, then to me, the rational question that needs to be asked in such a situation, then why have money and maybe even more to the point, why have prices, right? Because in a free market society, really under any economic system, but most definitely under a free market capitalistic system, it is the pricing mechanism that tells consumers and producers What's going on? Where are the markets going to clear? If you have a higher price for a good or a service, this being on the law of supply, you're going to have more people coming into that market on the producer side to try to reap those profits because they can get a high price for whatever that good or service might be, which of course could be predicated on the demand side of things for people, right? Because that's what they want. Those goods and services are in high demand. And thus, they bid up the price for those goods or services. There is a ton of information embedded in the pricing system. It's what allows markets to clear. If you really want something, maybe you're willing to pay $100 for it. Maybe somebody really wants it, and they're willing to pay $200, but you're not. Well, guess what it's going to sell for? It's going to sell for $200. So you're going to have to think, do you really want it or no? Because it's going to go to the highest bidder. It's going to go to what the market will bear. Now, of course, there has to be enough people willing to buy it at 200, but you understand what I'm saying. 
That's how the pricing system works. That's what the market is supposed to do on a daily basis when we're talking about the financial markets. It's supposed to find fair value. It's not just supposed to go up because you want it to or because you bought stocks and, of course, you'll make money if they go up. No, no, that's not how it works. You're supposed to find fair value. You want a price that is representative of fair value. You know, everybody was panicking now or is, at least to some degree with this huge sell-off. Well, why weren't people panicking when we were in the midst of a melt-up? I mean, that was just as ridiculous. At least this makes sense. This is the cleansing. This is the clearing. This is markets trying to do what they're supposed to do inherently. Find fair market value. Find a true clearing price. I just don't, I just never understood that. If it goes up, completely irrational, completely on a fraud, oh, that's perfectly fine. Because I'm a super genius, I bought stocks and they're going up making money because that's what I thought was going to happen. I'm a super genius, no need to panic. But as soon as the reverse comes into play, we got to shut things down, the market's got to stop, we got to ban short selling, we got to print trillions of dollars, we got to get involved with the repo market, we got to use emergency quantitative easing and other monetary, other monetary policies. The federal government has to come to stimulus package after stimulus package after stimulus package. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But getting back to the question, does money matter? Does debt matter? Do prices matter? Because if we're going to enter a new paradigm where, and I hope this isn't the case, but should we by some means, and maybe some other country, adopts MMT and truly thinks that that is the way to go. Modern monetary theory. Why have prices? Because if debt, here's my point. If debt doesn't matter, if deficits don't matter, then what difference does the price make? You get what I'm saying? What, why, why, what difference does it make what the price is? Because if I can go into debt and I can have as, many, as big a deficit as I want, clearly the price doesn't matter. Right? Because the deficit they're saying doesn't matter. Therefore, the price must not matter. Doesn't matter if it's $10, $100, a million dollars. I want it. I can print the money to get it. I'm going to have it. So what if it blows out the deficit? So what if it blows up a national debt? Too bad. Makes no difference. Now, I don't know how these idiots think this would work on the household level. I mean, why is it okay for a government to go into debt and have all these deficits, but people have to abide by the rules. Households have to abide by the rules. You have to live within your means. The government can go and do whatever they want. They already do. They can give that money to whoever they want, and they pretty much already do. So now, I guess proponents of MMT are perfectly okay with that going into hyperdrive. This is what I'm saying. I don't think these people who had come up with this ludicrous idea of a economic theory, which it is not. I don't think they put a lot of thought into anything. And the fact that this has gained traction, to me, is quite frightening. Because now, when people are in desperate times, because of a global, global pandemic, because of a major market sell-off, which we're just at the tip of the iceberg on, as, as far as my analysis is concerned, People are going to do desperate measures. You know, desperate times call for desperate measures, as they say. I think that's a bunch of junk. Personally, I think that's the time when you stick to your principles. You either believe in what you stand for or you don't. It's, it's, it's going to show you who truly believes in what they've been saying. You know, capitalism in the good days, socialism when there's panic. Of course, this wasn't capitalism that we're in the midst of, that we have been experiencing that caused this melt-up. It wasn't was a bunch of corporatism, a bunch of fascism, a bunch of socialism. That's what it was. And now it's getting even worse. Because today we have the president of the United States saying that he thinks it's a good idea to take, uh, you know, some companies national, basically, for the federal government to have an equity stake in the companies that we are going to be bailing out. The president of the United States. The President of the United States. Do you understand what's going on? You say, oh, well, we did it before. Oh, two wrongs make a right. Three wrongs make a right. 
Bush did it, it's okay. Obama did it, it's okay. So it's okay for Trump to do it. Wasn't Trump supposed to be different? Wasn't he supposed to remove us from this junk, this garbage? And now he's up, yeah, I really think that's a good idea. We'll take ownership of some of the of these companies. Basically already announcing that we will be bailing out the airlines, that we will be bailing out the cruise lines, and that we might be bailing out the hotels too. Wow. Who's in the hotel business, by the way? Oh, yeah, that's right, Trump, yeah. Hmm. See how that works. Can't make this stuff up. I mean, yeah, there's a lot to talk about with the markets. I mean, who who knows? I mean, it's it, there's volatility back and forth. What's going to take place tomorrow is anybody's guess. You know, yesterday we talked about the great unraveling. I cited some other podcasts that we had done there with trouble in the bond market, with the dollar doom loop. And as would be the case, we're ahead of the curve again. And the Federal Reserve announced that they are extending and issuing FX or dollar swaps with central banks around the world. Not all of them, but most of them. But most of them. I think they're excluding, at least right now, the People's Bank of China, which is probably a good move. But nonetheless, because there is a massive dollar shortage, the Federal Reserve is going to come to the rescue, not only for the United States, but for all other central banks and countries around the world. Hmm. Yeah, great. With dollar swaps. So basically, what's going to take place is the Federal Reserve is going to print money and give it to central banks. And typically, because there's supposed to be a swap, they're supposed to get something in kind, but who knows what's really taking place. They're probably just printing them and giving them out, because that's all they do. No checks and balances, not held to account by anybody. It's a complete hijacking of this country, which is, which is supposed to be based off of a constitutional republic, which is grounded in a system of checks and balances. These people at the Federal Reserve are not elected officials. They're not. They're paid handsomely, and they have an immense amount of power. They control the cost of capital, or of printed counterfeit money, actually, would be a little bit more accurate. That's what they do. They set interest rates, and then they do all of these other bailout programs, sometimes behind the scenes in secret and sometimes right in your face. Right now, it's all in our face. And again, during the greatest economy ever, if you're to believe the president, and if you're even to believe many members of the Federal Reserve, they might not go as far to say it's the best ever, but it was humming along, it was good. And now, all of a sudden, only a few weeks away, or I should say a few weeks from all-time highs in the U.S. stock market, we're now pulling out emergency measures that we have not seen, that we have not used since the depths of the great financial crisis, which was one of the worst in human history. Isn't that amazing? And how many of you continue to believe the Federal Reserve? How many of you continue to believe the President of the United States and think he knows what he's doing and knows what he's talking about? How many think the Federal Reserve continues to know what they're talking about? I mean, just because they are a quote-unquote authoritative figure and that they're on the TV... They must be telling the truth. I mean, you got to get your head examined. Again, there is no leadership on this planet because they're all lying. The Fe- I mean, the Federal Reserve, the White House, the ECB, the Chinese Communist Party, the People's Bank of China, the Bank of England had an emergency meeting today, cut interest rates, no surprise. It's a coordinated effort. It is a complete and total coordinated effort. You have more cries from people now in Washington and on Wall Street, calling for the Federal Reserve to start buying corporate debt. Another bailout of the corporations. Well, I guess, you know, we broke their legs. We gave, we tempted them with all this easy money for the past, you know, 12 years. I guess the least we can do is bail them out and buy all their crap back. Not let anybody go out of business. Not let anybody restructure. Not let any smart entrepreneur waiting in the wings, even within some of these companies, the opportunity to bust down the doors and say, fire the executives, hire me, because they led us down this path of ruin. And I've been stating here for months, if not years, I know what I'm talking about. Let me run this company. But that's not going to take place. Because these idiots, and there are many of them, are going to get bailed out. 
We talked about this on a couple podcasts well, again last night with all of the share buybacks. The airline industry, $45 billion in share buybacks over the past decade. Now they're coming to Congress and the White House asking for $50 billion in bailouts. Why don't you issue more stock? Issue it back out. Now let's see what your company's worth. I mean, are these people going to resign? Are they going to get fired? What about the members of the board? This is, this is disgusting. I, I mean, I don't understand what people don't understand. Well, I guess if you get your $1,200, you're going to be happy. So who cares, right? Oh, good. You get paid off. You're bribed. It makes you just as much the same as everybody else out there. 1200 bucks, whatever it's going to be, maybe once, maybe twice, who knows what they're going to do. Of course, we don't have the money. But you know who was prepared for a lot of this, don't you? And they're, they're starting to report this. Some of you may have seen this. Congressmen, senators, at least a couple senators that I've seen so far, who were privy to the coronavirus before the major sell-off, who were had, you know, behind closed door meetings with government officials and you know, professionals and experts on the on this matter. Well, they sold their stocks. They got out of the stock market. Wow. Yet they have the audacity to come out and tell the American people that everything's okay, we'll be okay, we'll get we'll get a handle on this. But that's not what they did. They didn't think that was the case, even though those words came out of their mouths. No, no. They had to save their own rear ends because they had information that everybody else didn't have. And they sold their stock. One of these idiots even bought shares of a company that could benefit from people working at home because of teleconferences and the like. So one idiot actually profited from all of this information. Now, if you had insider information of this type of stuff, they'd lock you up and throw away the key. These people are there. And they have the audacity to tell you that everything is okay. This is our government. This is where we're spending. This is, these are the people who are managing three, three and a half trillion dollars worth of our tax dollars. And that's not enough. They got to borrow an additional trillion on top of that. And with the looks of it, it's going to be two trillion because we're already on the path for one trillion plus. Now, the size of this stimulus program maybe is going to be $1.3 trillion. So does money even matter? I mean, it's, this is like helicopter money. You know, it used to be a joke. It's what it was meant as, as a joke. Helicopter money. Central bankers getting up in helicopters, flying over town after town with bags of money and just throwing it out the window. And letting the minions pick it up and fight amongst themselves to see who gets what. That type of situation. Well, that's where we find ourselves because there's nobody who is going to look the American people in the eye and tell them the truth. That we have done messed up on a grand scale because we're all guilty to some degree in this. We have either, either voted for these people, we refuse to start a revolution, whatever the case may be. You're very well or very much involved with the political system. Whatever the case is, you have your hand out, you're trying to play the game. We're all part of it, one form or another to some degree or another, some more so than others, obviously. But we're all responsible for this. When is it going to stop? Because I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, this type of behavior that we are engaging in now with bailout after bailout, monetary policy after monetary policy is not going to be the answer. This is what we have been living under for a long time on hyperdrive for the past 12 years, and look where it has brought us. So how can any sane, rational, thoughtful human being actually think that doing more of this insanity is going to actually solve the problem? The answer is it's not. And that's why we've continued to see the market sell off to large degrees after announcements of stimulus, after announcements of emergency monetary policies. Got a lot longer to go. Don't be surprised if there's some sort of massive rally in the midst of this. That would be following history. That's all. We've seen this time and time again. Bear markets, you get major rallies. So don't be surprised if there is. But what, that likely, what that's likely going to be is what they call a major bull trap. Because the bulls, 
sitting on the sidelines who just got walloped but are still bullish. Think, all right, here's a massive rally. That's it. The bottom's in. Here comes another bull market. We're already ready to go. Let's start buying everything again. It's a head fake. It's a bull trap because it ain't so. It ain't so. The bear was just hibernating for a short while. And then it's full on. And if you study financial history, you study the markets, you can easily go back and see this. I mean, you can go on Yahoo Finance, download the data from the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, whichever one you want, and you will see these massive rallies in bear markets only to turn out to be head fakes. Okay, and there's a lot of people out there who trade the markets who've never experienced this. And there are a lot of people out there who still think that this time is different which is exactly what took place in 07, 08, the same exact thing that took place in 00, 01, and every other time before that. History may not repeat, but it often rhymes. The only thing that makes this time different is going to be that much worse. And I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am, because thus far everything has been playing out as I have seen it. Again, not so much with the rapidity, the quickness of how this is cascaded, but the fact that it has is no surprise to me, and nor should it be a surprise to this audience. I'm, I am beyond disgusted with our system, with our politicians, with our government, with our Federal Reserve. Do you understand why I've been stating here, if you want solutions, you have to abolish the Federal Reserve? If you want solutions, you have to abolish the federal income tax. I mean, what the, fe what, what the government is in essence doing right now is giving us our tax dollars back, right? Because they're ours. There's no money tree. There's no seeds. Money seeds, you plant and then a money tree grows. That's not what the government gets its money from. It gets it from you. It gets it from me. So I, I just, they're giving us our money back. So why even have the taxes in the first place? Get what I'm saying? Just let us keep it. If it's so important to give it back to us, to make sure the, the economy is strong, then just make sure we always have 100% of what we earn to begin with. How's that for starters? You can have a small consumption tax on the federal level. Come on. Start using your head. Get out of this paradigm. Otherwise, nothing's going to be solved. Nothing is going to be resolved. It is going to be the same song and dance, and it will just get that much worse. I think this time is going to be it. I honestly think this is it. I think this is the final cleansing, if you will, of this BS system that has really been pedal to the metal since 1971 when we have been fully removed from any linkage to the gold standard. That was it. Because the Federal Reserve and basically every other central bank at that point could work at will. They wanted to print money. Let's do it. So in essence, we've been living in an MMT world. In essence, we have been because it's been deficit after deficit after deficit, national debt after national debt, crisis after crisis, bull market, bear market, boom bust cycle. But this time, I think we overdid it. <clears throat> I think we overextended ourselves. I think we overplayed our hand. And it's what needs to happen. It's what needs to happen. Of course, no politician, no central banker wants a recession or a depression on their hands under their watch. I get it. But President Trump, again, had an, a, a prime opportunity to remove himself from all of this from day one. From day one. But he didn't. Presumably because he's a narcissist or an idiot. And that's putting it lightly. And I've done my best over a few years to defend the man and give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, as of late, over the past several months, not so much. Not so much on a lot of things. I will still give him credit where credit is due. But his rhetoric, his language, his calls for some of these economic policies are just beyond the pale. Unbecoming of a president of the United States, especially one with the mandate that he had to, quote unquote, drain the swamp, whatever you want to call it. But he embraced the stock market. You know, it's one thing to maybe as a president to embrace the economy. Okay, I get it. 
I still think that's a bad play. I don't care who you are. I think it's a bad play. But I get it. The stock market's a completely different thing. I mean, as the president of the United States, you're not supposed to have any control over it. You better not have any control over it. Otherwise, this is not a free market system, which of course it isn't. So maybe he does. But how he pays so much attention to it, how he's basically pegged his legacy and his administration's success or failure to it, to me is is beyond idiotic. Why would you do such a thing? He could be in control of his actions. He could be in control of delegating responsibility to the various agencies within his administration, within our government, to do things that could have led to a true draining of the swamp. Some accountability. Some truth-telling. Some cutting back of government programs that would not lead to trillion-dollar deficits, but would lead to a smaller government with smaller deficits. But that's not the case, is it? It's not even close. So the president, it's going to be very interesting to see how the rest of 2020 plays out, economically speaking, politically speaking, socially speaking. We're down to two now on the Democratic side. Tulsi Gabbard, of course, she was a long shot to begin with, but she has finally suspended her campaign and has endorsed former Vice President Joe Biden. And of course, Senator Bernie Sanders is thinking about how he is going to continue with his campaign. So don't be surprised if he suspends his campaign in short order as well. We also have this evening, Governor Gavin Newsom of California has issued a statewide stay-at-home policy. You have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, the size and scope of California for this country is huge. Huge. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but I believe California... If it was a standalone country, a standalone economy, it would be one of the largest in the world, definitely in the top 10. Just California alone. I think about 40 million people. And there are some models out there that are predicting the spread of the coronavirus and that it could potentially infect up to 25, 26 million of those 40 million Californians. I hope that's not the case. I hope that is a worst-case scenario of a model. I'm sure that's what the case is, that it's a worst-case scenario. But nonetheless, if that happens, even half of that, even if 12 million people out of California alone get it, imagine what that will do to that economy. It'll cripple it, which in effect will cripple the American economy. All of the tech sector, huge agriculture, in California. So what kind of shortages are we going to get there? These are important questions because, you know, you can live without a laptop or an iPhone or some other technology. You can't really live without food. So it's important. So we'll see if this works. Of course, people will be able to leave their homes for groceries and the essentials and that type of stuff. But for the most part, it is a lockdown. Is it a matter of time before this becomes nationwide? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Again, we tend to trail Italy and some other countries by a week or two. And we know that Italy has been on lockdown, complete lockdown now for, what, a week or two? So we're getting there. Interestingly, also, the numbers out of Italy, at least from a death standpoint, has officially exceeded the deaths in China. Ladies and gentlemen... I don't think so. I don't think so. We have Italy, which has an aging population. And you have many households that are multi-generational. So you have the grandson, the father, and the grandfather, and, you know, grandmother and mother all living in the same house, a few generations under one household. But 60 million Italians with an aging population. One of the oldest in Italy, maybe the oldest in Italy, or I'm sorry, in Europe. China has 1.2, 1.3 billion people. They also have multi-generational households. 
And we're supposed to believe that there have been more deaths in Italy than in China? I don't think so. I don't believe the Chinese for a minute. I don't believe the Chinese Communist Party for a minute. These statistics have been BS from day one, and we've been saying so. The Chinese economy, the country, the government, is not going to shut down the entire country, or half of it, for nothing. The epicenter of the coronavirus in China, in Hubei province, in Wuhan, a city of 11 million people. That city alone is one-sixth, one-sixth the population of Italy, the entire country of Italy. And we're supposed to believe that there are more deaths in Italy than there was in China. I don't think so. Not even close. Will we ever know the numbers out of China? Probably not. But it's a multiple, 10, 20, 100, maybe 1,000, who knows, a billion? I mean, a billion people. I mean, do the math. It can add up very quickly. I hope that's not the case, that it's millions of people who have perished and died in China. But my goodness, my goodness, it could have been. It could have been. And on a percentage basis, that still would have been a small percentage of the total population. So we continue to see lockdown after lockdown, shutdown after shutdown, non-essential businesses closing or having limited hours. This is going to have a huge economic effect. Obviously, we're seeing it in the markets. People are starting to really witness it at home. But that's what's going on. I mean, does this have to happen? I guess. I don't know. We're, are we going to know the truth? Is this really that bad? Could be. Could be. Trying to make sure that it doesn't turn into being something that bad. It's crazy times. It's all I know. It's absolutely crazy times. It's biblical. It really is. Global pandemic. We have a locust outbreak, of course, in East Africa and many parts of the Middle East. Financial markets in, in ruin. Society on the brink of collapse in one country after the next, protest after the next, civil wars, regional wars, proxy wars, rhetoric heating up between the United States and China a little bit in regards to where this virus started because the president wants to come out and say that this is the Chinese virus, which it is, right? That's where it started. There's many names. West Nile. I mean, come on. Is anybody saying that's racist? I mean, that's a, that's a little much. I mean, come on. And of course, the Chinese are saying, ah, oh, it didn't start here. It started from the United States. They brought it over here. So this is getting back and forth. I mean, we got to be careful here. We have to be careful. Because I don't know if this thing was, you know, was it an act of nature? Start in a bat and get passed along to another animal. Somebody ate that and boom, now everybody's sick. Or was this conjured up in some sort of high-tech laboratory in China or somewhere else? That's what I'm saying, folks. We do these podcasts all the time with those titles, right? What to believe, who to believe, what difference does it make? Because we're not going to know. We're not going to know, but we are going to follow. We're going to fall in line, aren't we? We're going to stay in our homes. We're going to do our best to make sure we don't get sick, which, which, hood, which should make sure that others don't get sick in the process. And that's a good thing. I mean, maybe the silver lining after all of this is people will be more thoughtful and respectful of each other after this experience. Maybe. Maybe. I hope that's the case, but I'm not going to hold my breath. So that's some of the news today. A little removal from the nitty gritty with the market performance. You know what's going on. And we'll continue to do that and continue to have those conversations. But I just wanted to sort of take a step back, talk about what's going on with these lockdowns a little bit. The Federal Reserve, these policies, the federal government, these policies, these stimulus and emergency measures. And to ask the question, does money even matter? Because if we're just going to give it out to everybody, 
and the first sign of distress, then why even have it? What's the point of it? And what about all the people that lost so much money over the past few weeks in their 401ks? Are we supposed to issue all of them a check to make them whole as well? Like we are the airline industry? I mean, why is the airline industry more important than the average Joe? Who's getting close to retirement? Who just lost maybe $300,000? A couple hundred thousand dollars, one hundred thousand, fifty thousand dollars It's a lot to him. The CEO of the airline industries are making out like bandits. They might have to give up their country club, but they'll still be fine after the fact. The average Joe, maybe not so much. So when do these bailouts stop? I'll tell you this, they never should have started. There should be no bailouts. There should be no bailouts. For any institution, for any corporation, for any individual. We have to learn our lesson and we're not. It's just the same song and dance. What about all the other businesses that go out of business or all of the other individuals who have financial hardship when we're not in the midst of a stock market decline or we're not in the midst of a global pandemic? Are they to be forgotten? Evidently. Unless we're all in the same boat together, you're screwed. Hope you're starting to understand that this is not a free market capitalistic system. I hope you're understanding that our government basically wants to nationalize things, corporations, and that our president is perfectly fine with it. You might be fine with it. I am not. Thank you so much for joining me today, ladies and gentlemen. But a pleasure having you. As always, please like, share, subscribe, get the word out, leave your comments. We do love hearing from you. Stay diversified, stay vigilant, and stay with the Capitol News. I am Alex Kreitis. Godspeed.